Hello viewers, it's that time once again where we have the most infamous race in Gran Turismo 7. Polyphony have done it once again and brought back the Daytona Oval Race. Without failure, it seems to bring about the most carnage-filled and chaotic races in the game. So you jump into online, you jump into the daily races, and there it is, daily race A, around the Daytona Tri-Oval, with no DRSR updates, which always produces carnage. And here's the car we're gonna be using, the Corvette C8. Interesting choice, let's see how it performs on the track. Now, I did a little bit of a practice uh, run here, but to be honest, you're just driving around in a circle. I mean, sorry NASCAR fans, I mean, I'm just kidding. There is a lot of detail to oval racing. You have to be very, very specific with your driving style. And we're about to find that out here in our first race with no rain on the radar for many miles. These guys on this plane are about to witness the most horrific race of all time unfold below them on their Daytona Speedway. Here we go then, starting in P11, because I haven't really qualified, and as ever, it's going to uh, sort itself out into a nice straight line, apart from the two cars in front. So it's not going to be a straight line. Ignore everything I say. But here we go then. This is always an incredibly tactical battle. I've covered oval racing in Gran Turismo uh, many times. You know, it's, it comes up, it comes about every now and then, every couple of months it comes up. And if there's one thing that is the same, it's really that it's going to produce drama. Now, one thing here is that we are catching up with the leader. That is an overall good sign. Uh, the guy in ninth is uh, catching up with the guy in eighth. That's good. We can rely on him as a team to try to pull towards the group in front. And that's what you've got to do here. You've got to form alliances with the players around you. And try to move your way up the pack. You see here, uh, here this guy on the right. Kind of gets um, pushed out wide. That's where you don't really want to be. You kind of want to be on the left-hand side at all times. That guy facing the wrong way. That's definitely where you don't want to be. Facing the wrong way with oncoming traffic. Cars coming at you at 200 miles an hour. Not ideal. But unfortunately, there was a slight bit of contact there. You can see I'm just dropping off the back of the pack. And suddenly I find myself about a second away and I need this car behind to work with me or for the cars in front to start smashing into each other and the wall like they are. Now this car in front, not sure what they're doing, grinding off the walls. But so we're going to hopefully try and leapfrog past them and use their slipstream to catch back up with the pack. But really to no avail, here we are at the end of lap number three, still nine tenths away from the pack, not in the slipstream range. Now I did actually manage to catch up with this orange car who dropped off the back of the pack. And this is kind of what happens in these races. Cars just kind of get um, discarded from the back of the main uh, the main fighting pack. And here we are in P8. Still over a second away from the pack. Can't quite catch up at this time. But as you can see, they begin to start fighting quite uh, comprehensively. Someone else uh, serving a penalty there. Oh no, actually that's a lapped car. And thank goodness for this guy behind who wanted to work as a team. Really, really encouraging. And it's great to see that people are willing to... Uh, oh, someone's spinning there. It's great to see people willing to work together and not totally kill each other at the first opportunity. And uh, oh, a bit more carnage going on here. Kind of doing a nice little bunny hop across this track, straight into the wall on the other side. That's going to be P6. Look at that. Uh, so a fairly solid recovery from a bit of a shaky start in my first race. And you can see here, as we come to the lines, pretty much four five abreast i mean i can't actually see because the sun is so damn bright i don't know why they make the reflections so bright in this game as we come up to the line look at that near enough four abreast almost five abreast as we come up to the finish line absolutely outrageous scenes here we cross the line look how close it was p6 that's the top five 0.1 second and i was 0.4 away from the race win let's take a look at that then this is how close it was. You see the guy in the orange car was the winner. And then the three coming up to the line near enough. I mean, I can't even tell the difference between the green and the blue car. That is so, so close. And in fact, it was 0.03 
on the line. So extremely close, 0.003, extremely close finish. This is exactly what, this is what it looked like. On board with Scott, who was in the lead at the uh, final turn, but sometimes that's the worst place to be because you see here, everyone actually just overwhelms him and swamps him on the run up to the line. He actually finishes P3 ultimately. And uh, here's an interesting replay of that finish. Looking really cool. Let's take a look at some of the incidents that happened in that race. So this was the first one, lap number two. This guy was actually going for the lead. I don't know why he's turning left there. There's clearly a car there. And uh, it came back to bite him uh, here as he gets vaporized into a new dimension and is sent spinning into Barry R. Incredible scenes. Uh, we're going to move on to this guy who was seen grazing the wall and not for real any real reason as you can see i'm not sure what he was doing there turning right on a left hander uh, kind of a rogue strategy there you go and how about this one flash dagger in a fairly compromised position there ends up getting spun around and i like that he keeps the throttle on and causes a massive smoke screen to develop on the track but luckily no one else going into him then there was this incident with Oscar skipping across the grass. Incredible. Love that. Into the wall on the opposite side. And then that's how I managed to get into P6. Then this was the end. I mean, it's, it's hard to predict which car is going to win at this point in time. Normally it would be the green car on the inside if, if they're backed up by the car behind. But here it seems as though the orange car just has the momentum. Going to receive a bump here. And yeah, it's just, it is um, a bit of a lottery when it comes to the finish. And we're going to try and go a couple of positions better here in race number two, starting 12th out of 12, dead last. But our strategy remained kind of the same, really, was to stick to the inside, not take any risks, just work with the pack in front, and just make sure we don't get overtaken. I think this race is very much about try just to not lose a position rather than try to go for positions. If you try to really overtake, you actually end up losing out more. So I found that just staying on the left and waiting for the opportunities to arise was the better uh, method. You can see here, just cars just get pushed wide and then you just, you slowly but surely move your way forward. And I'm not particularly trying to overtake. It's more a case of just waiting for everyone else to crash. And well, lo and behold, that's going to happen because it's Gran Turismo 7 oval racing. And here we are. Now in P6 at the midway point of lap 3. So that's a solid return so far. We've still got four laps to manoeuvre our way into the lead of the race. Very, very close indeed. Only 0.3 behind the leader. And there's five cars in front. Now, let's see what we do here. Is we're going to skip it forward slightly to lap number five still in the same position still in p6 just biding my time no need to rush so this guy gets edged wide and then i'm going to say thank you very much i will take your position off your hands up into b5 how about this one so ridge goes to the outside here and that's just that's the strategy that normally doesn't work you need someone else to back you up and start pushing you from behind it doesn't work you can see what's going to happen here everyone's going to pile on to the left hand side the car on the outside just has no chance you're just going to get out of the line out of the snake and you're just going to have to wait until you can filter in at the back of the pack and that's why you actually shouldn't try to overtake it's kind of a weird thing normally you should try to wait until the end but during the race itself normally just wait and then just hope for the best and uh, i think that's the common strategy here now here i, I think i've got a little bit unlucky a bit uh, bumpy on the final lap here just got edged wide and that was the moment that kind of sealed my fate as I've got edge wide, I'm no longer in the train, I'm no longer on the left, or as much left as I would like to be. You see there's someone on my left. Uh, the Spaniard here is about to get vaporised and murdered. And that hands me a position, thankfully. As we come up to the line, what's it going to be? VQS Jack goes for a move on the left, Frenchman doesn't like it, edges him onto the cross. And as we cross the line, we're going to get P5 uh, Jack there on the grass. Uh, with a penalty 0.5 away from the race lead but it's not good enough it's not it's not good enough and obviously that's the fault of the livery so we're going to change it to this a nascar livery so surely 
we can't lose because this is an oval race. We're 100% going to win the next one. Now, check out this amazing qualifying lap here. Um, finally setting at 336.7. Absolutely scorching pace. It put me 27,000th in the world. And it didn't actually do anything for my grid position. Well, I'm 11th, but not 12th. We still have to work our way through from the back. Let's see if we can do it. As, um, well, I mean, you know, it's the same kind of strategy. Just stick to the inside, play it safe. I'm, I was amazed the amount of people that would try to overtake by pulling to the right, run out of steam, get run wide, and then you just profit off of their mistakes. Now here, well, wind. RIP in peace, my friend. I went for a space that I think was there, but unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. And he is now, he's in a better place, to be honest. He's in a better place, so RIP, wind. But um, you had a good run, you had a good life. Uh, but thank you. Anyway, uh, we now move up into... Well, where are we? We've got the Lambo on the outside. Lambo? Why am I saying Lambo? They're all Chevrolets. Chevrolet on the outside. Not going to work. Again, you try the outside. Not, not really going to do you many favours. You have to stick to the inside. So here we are. Lap 7. Onto the back straight. Spaniard gets spun around. It's all kicking off big time now. Flash dagger on the right. Oh my goodness. Cars behind spinning around doing nice little 360 no scopes on the back straight and not an opportune time to do that we find ourselves in p2 could this be the one where we slingshot through into the race lead at the final moment let's take a look uh, stepping into that slipstream it might be a little bit too late there's a back marker just coming up to us here and then as we hit the line there it is that's the difference between winning and being Super GT and not winning. 0 0.058 of a second. And it's going to be a P2. Frustrating. At least we were towards the front. Now we improve our qualifying time there. 46.001. And begin race number four. Let's see what we can do here. Now in this one, I got up to P3. This is the final lap. And again, it was just a little bit too, too much. Too little too late. As you can see, finishing in third. Now, obviously, the NASCAR livery wasn't doing it, so we had to change it again to this one. Now, this one is obviously going to be the real deal. And, um, you know, the NASCAR livery just clearly was slowing me down. So, here we go. Race number five. Will this be finally the one? Look at this massive sideways moment. Turning it into Ken Block, Jim Carner. 13. What, what Jim Carner were you on these days? I don't even know. It's about 13 or something. But anyway, that moment kind of didn't help. As um, I lost however many positions down into P7. Now, I've made it a little bit of a recovery here. Just overtaking a couple of cars. Just scrapping my way back through. Just doing my best. And we got an overtake there. This car, I, I don't know why cars were sticking to the right and opening up. The overtake on the left but they made it easy for me this also made it easy for me well it didn't actually because scotty there crashing and then i kind of preempted going to the right and then <laughs> as you can see a calamitous couple of moments there a huge kerfuffle and if anything it actually helps because i ended up p3 so i preempted going to the right there <laughs> i should have stayed to the left and then it triggered this uh, big pile up and obviously, if that was real life, there would have been a huge amount of fatalities. But there we are, P3, ultimately. Now, I wanted to play the top replay in the world to see what I could learn. The only thing I did learn was that they were using assists in order to go quicker. So I thought, okay, this is the secret, is it? We're going to turn on ASM, the Active Stability Management, and the Counter Steer Assist. And obviously... Um, it wasn't the livery, it was the assist. It wasn't also my lack of driving ability, it was clearly the assist. So now we're going to try it to see what it's like. I felt like the car was a little bit stiffer, more predictable, well, kind of, it was just stiffer. It would stay in a more predictable line through the corners, I, I suppose. Because this car was actually a little bit uh, choppy through the turns, especially when it got a tiny bit of oversteer at speed. That guy exits stage left. 
don't know what track he's doing, but uh, it wasn't the correct one. Anyway, we find ourselves now in P4, moving our way slowly but surely towards the front of the pack, as I, I've been doing in most races, but it was never quite enough to get that elusive race win. Now, what lap are we on here? Lap 4, again, just in P3, just get edged wide here. Fortunately, a car managed to get on the inside, and I couldn't really do too much about it. Just waiting to slot back in there as early as possible. So, back in P5, we've kind of rescued the situation. Now, Matthew here kind of got a, had a weird moment, lost a couple of miles per hour, and therefore a lot of momentum. We managed to jump back past into P4, and then just managed to get to the left-hand side here of the guy in the NASCAR livery. And that helped me get back into P3. So this was good. Beginning of lap 6. Back into the podium positions. This was the final lap. Lap 7. Coming through the final corner. Are we able to get past Fun Police for the race win? It's not quite going to happen. I think third place is perhaps too far back to get this race win. And as we cross the line, there it is. 0.052 and it's going to be another frustrating second don't ask me why the avatar there is clapping because i'm quite sick finishing second i mean it's not a bad result but you want to win on an oval race like this it's all about the win on this race i quite stupidly tried to turn off the assist mid race and then the auto drive braked and i lost loads of time and i was miles off the pack in this one what happened here? I was in P5, minding my own business. These French players had a nice little civil war. And unfortunately, this guy felt like smashing back on and absolutely murdering me. He's now in jail for life. But as we move on to this race, this is race number nine. I was on it, I was on it uh, this session for three hours. Disappointing three hours of trying to achieve that race win. But would race number nine be that moment where we cross the line and finally do it in first place let's see shall we so here this was a nice tasty little moment kind of deja vu of the last race to an extent now boom that moment happened and suddenly i found myself in the lead of a race this is actually the first time i'd actually probably been in the lead of any of the nine races that i did and now it's a simple case of well just stay there to the end and when i say simple i mean absolutely not simple at all because you've got 10 other cars doing their utmost to make sure you do not stay in the lead but here we go one more lap left in the race i am at the front let's see what we can do flash dagger up behind and i know that he's a friendly driver we can get some good support from him and that's the kind of guy you want in second place backing you up now, unfortunately, it didn't last long because on the exit of the corner, they're both going to exit stage left after a bit of contact. And this opened me up to attack from the Frenchman. And there wasn't much I could do here to stave off this attack. He had, he had momentum, he had a run. And all I could do is protect the inside and hope that it was enough. But unfortunately, guys, luck was not on my side on this session. It was cursed and I finished second. So after all that, I decided that was enough of this stupid oval race. I'm gonna turn off my console and end the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have yourself an amazing day and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.